Okay, so right here, taking this into the next phase, okay, toss. This, that play should have been power read toss to the field to get Rocky on the edge against that linebacker. So he's downhill against him. And it's a different fit, so he might have a better angle on him because of that. So that's bad coaching. Again, we did not put our players in the most successful position that they should have been. We should have been better at getting them into the right spot. Okay, so now we're going to motion to it. Okay, so we're going to motion to a three-by-one wing to the field. Okay, and now we're going to run power retoss with another one of the big backs. Okay, Mr. Jones. And right there, see how he's able to get downhill right now? Like he's able to get behind his pads and not have to worry about turning the corner. We get a better perimeter block by number five right here. Okay, or that might be Trey. Either way, they're both Atlanta kids. If we could have gotten the ATL to get a little bit better block right here, we would have been able to been downhill on this right now. Okay, but still a nice positive four-yard gain. Okay, one more time, same action, same team. But now we're going to, this is not power read, this is actually dart toss. Okay, another MA by coach. Okay, now we're going to go dart toss. So they've been seeing us run power read, power read toss. So we're going to change it up. We're basically running QB ISO, which is you got man scheme on the front side and you're going to get the play, uh, backside tackle to pull. Okay, now we can ISO that backside will when they're all seeing power read toss action and we get the quarterback against the safety. It also happens when you have an almost 200-pound 5'9", 5'10 quarterback that's built like a bowling ball. He breaks a lot of safeties. This was 17's last play of the year. Okay. So dart toss again, different formation. Same action. Now we get the uno box. Okay. Still read somebody. Okay. Now one of the big coaching points against this 4-1 box, bless you, okay, is you see this backside will linebacker up at the top in a safety. Classic quarters fit. The number two receiver, when he's got a jab block, which is our head up block, okay, if, I, if I'm head up, I'm going to try to dig him out because it's straight ahead. But if my man's like two defenders inside as far as where he is alignment-wise, I'm going to angle for him. If I can not get to him or he gets to the line of scrimmage, I am now bypassing to my man right here at safety. And you're going to see uh, my man do a great job right here, try to dig him out, doesn't get to him, and creates an angle to have the angle on the safety to create the explosive. Okay, so that's one of the big coaching points when we're, when we're running the gap schemes or any of our blocking on the perimeter. They got to know if I can't get to them, it's just like O-line, okay? When we talk zone to O-lineman, they don't have a man, and they got to learn that. It's the same thing for receivers. If I cannot dig him out or he gets to the line of scrimmage, I got to bypass. I can't waste myself here, possibly screw up the play because I'm now creating a pile when I could create the home run. 80-yard runs don't come from the running back or the O-line. They come from the receivers. The consistent run comes from the O-line and the interior players. The home runs come from the perimeter players. And if you're not a receiver coach pre uh, preaching that, go to defense. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, I, like, I'm a block first guy before you get the rock. No rock, no block, okay? Okay. 